that was cut out of the mountain without hands, which was Jesus, the stone that the builders rejected, that we also now are living stones, building together as a habitation of God, right? The stone comes and hits in that fourth kingdom of Daniel, and now we see in this fourth kingdom a beast. Guess what? The Ancient of Days comes and sits. We have Jesus show up. He is one with the Ancient of Days. Are you with me? So hallelujah. So let's look at the interpretation. <coughs> oh, I didn't get that. I didn't set it up to play. I just set it up. spirit in the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me. Amen? He didn't know what they were. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, or four kingdoms, which shall rise out of the earth. There they are. The lion, the bear, the leopard, and the beast. Babylonian Empire, lion wings, real Persian. We get to the bottom of that real quick. Um, I've got another 270 slides in this, so we're not going to get the end of it today, but we'll pick it up tomorrow. So here we have um, those four successive kingdoms. This is all part of the revelation that... Um, he was given, there were four kingdoms that were coming, and it was perfect along with Daniel, there's that other remember Daniel's account of the dream for the details of the kingdoms the interpretation simply says four kings or kingdoms, Gabriel says very little about the kingdoms, because that's not the issue, it's the time span God's confirming what he's already prophesied, you gotta remember you can't forget that God's already said in Daniel 2 God said in Daniel 7, God confirms what he said in Daniel 2. Amen? <coughs> Daniel 7, 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. And th this is what blows my mind, that, that they think we're just trying, hoping one day to get in the kingdom, and God goes, what are you talking about? I gave you the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. I mean, God says forever and then ever and ever. So here's the thing. Did the Ancient of Days sit? Yes. Was the Son carried on a cloud to the Ancient of Days? Yes. Did He receive kingdom, glory, honor, and power, and dominion? Yes. Yes. Well, if He did, He gave the kingdom to us, and we are supposed to possess the kingdom forever and ever from way back then. So guess what? John informed us the devil's got the hell scared out of him. He's already sent out Antichrist, the spirit that we told you would come. It's here now. And it's already deceiving. Even so much so there were some that were with them that went out from them. And, and the reason they went out is because they were going to lie against the truth. Judas was just a seed that turned on Christ. He was just a seed, one of the twelve. There were others that went too. And, and John was saying, they're out there, they're lying and they're deceiving and everything else, but they come right out of the midst of them, which is where the spirit of Antichrist was going to come. If it doesn't come from renowned people early on, it has no weight, no bearing, and no measure. It has to be those that had the seal of approval on them at some point or another. That's the ones that has the worst. The ones that will do more damage to you are the ones closest to you. You know why? Because everybody will believe them because they know you better than anybody. So if they lie on you, it's got weight. When they're lying against the truth, they came out from the midst of the twelve. We don't know who it was. But all we know is they did go out, and when they did go out, they started turning everybody against the truth. Denying Christ. Denying the resurrection. Denying the kingdom. Denying everything. That none of it had happened. So in any case... The truth of the matter is, revealed right here in Daniel 7.18, 
The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Here's the key. If you don't take it, you won't possess it. Are you with me? You know why the church doesn't possess the kingdom? Because they don't even believe it's here. You're not going to take something, even though it belongs to you, if you don't think it's there to take. And if you don't take it, you can't possess it. Well, God said they'll take it and they'll possess it. And how, what was the extent of that? Forever, even forever and ever. God said, I can't say no more evers. It would be redundant, be unbelievable. If God says forever and ever and ever, I think that's enough forever and ever. Today. Now, we possess the kingdom. Now. Yes. And that's why you hear me holler so much about the kingdom. And holler about the authority and the power and the dominion that we have over the enemy and everything else. He's trying to lie still, cheat, destroy, do everything he can. And he has infiltrated Christianity to no end. So much so, they all pretty much agree, at least 90 plus percent, that the kingdom isn't here. Who would tell them that? The spirit of Antichrist. The one John warned us about. And guess what? People believe it. You know why? Because it comes from them that they believe knows God better than anybody. They would never lie to me. They're telling me the truth. Oh yeah, really? You see, the enemy couldn't have told the president and the president announced it. It would have meant nothing. So he had to infiltrate Christianity and he had. And unfortunately, more believe the lie by far than believe the truth. So guess what? We have a church with no power, no authority, no wisdom, no spiritual knowledge, no spiritual gifting, no vision for God. They're just trying to hold on. We could take this whole planet. We can take this whole planet. And he don't need all of us. He just needs a remnant. And we're not, we don't have to go against the armies as if we go against the principalities and the powers and the spiritual weakness in high places and the rulers of the darkness of this world because that's the remnant of the kingdom of darkness that's out there doing its deal. The king of darkness is gone. Jesus defeated him, stripped him, and made a show of him openly triumphing over him through the cross. Amen? <coughs> Excuse me. So the saints were to take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. That's a major hurdle for Christianity today. Back to Scripture, Daniel 7, 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Uh, I guess I loved it so much I want to say it again. And possess the kingdom forever and ever. Not just get in it. Possess it. You heard it correctly, the saints possess the kingdom. Remember that the kingdom would not be left to others. Remember Daniel 2? The kingdom would not be left to others. It would never be overthrown. It would never be destroyed. Well, guess what? When God gave us the kingdom, we would never be overthrown. It would never be given to anybody else. It's ours. Well, what's our duty? We are told in the scripture that he must rule until he makes all of his enemies a footstool for his feet in Peter. And it says, then, then we will deliver the kingdom up to the Father. We have it. And then we'll deliver it up to the Father. Are we going to see Jesus return? Yeah. He's going to come and meet us when we're done with the kingdom because we're going to deliver it back up to the Father. Here, Father, it's all yours. And then God will be all in all. <clears throat> oh, it's a glorious picture. It, it, it's one that the saints of God should be rejoicing and celebrating over instead of, oh my God, is that Antichrist? Oh my God, what are they going to do? It's going to get worse and worse. You know how many pastors I get messages from all the time? I get phone calls all the time. Brother, it's getting worse and worse. I go, yeah, when you're going to wake up and take some authority and power in the name of Jesus. They're, they're, they're so afraid they're cowering. They're trying to stock up food and they're trying to find shelters and places to hide and all this stuff. And I said, it's, it's the enemy that was running to the caves and crawling for the mountains to follow us and hide us from the face of him who's to come. It's Christ they were running from. It wasn't 
an antichrist. Christ is the one they wanted to hide from because they knew they had done wrong. And I'm going to tell you, if he appeared in the sky today, most of Christianity would be diving underneath anything they could because of the shame. Amen. What did you do with my name? Well, Lord, I, I held on. You, you, didn't, you didn't stand up. You didn't follow what I told you to do. I told you, go resist the devil. I told you the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against you. What does that mean? The gates of hell won't prevail against us. That means they won't keep you out. You mean you want me to go to hell? That's what I'm saying. Go get them out of there. Are you with me? If the gates of hell won't prevail, that means they're not going to stop you and keep you out. Well, why would I want to go to hell? Because we might have brothers and sisters down there. Not only that, that's where the devil's headquarters is. That's where the enemy of the kingdom of darkness is. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. God said you can go to hell if you want to. And if you want to, you can come right back out. You know why? Because he has the keys to death, hell, and the world. And he's got them, you do too. Everybody wants to stay away from hell. Well, if you think you're going to stay there, you best not go. But if you think you have a job you can do there, go in and bind the strong man and start destroying the works of the devil. Go in there and storm the gates of hell. Take over. Start subduing and start sending all those spirits into the lake of fire. I mean... God's going to turn this thing on its head. Amen. I heard Clyde for years say, I've charged hell with a water pistol. <laughs> you know what I said? Well, that water pistol is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I'll take that anointing. The gates of hell are not going to prevail against you. I mean, that would be a random statement. I don't think Jesus ever did. I think if we give account for every word that proceeds out of our mouth, I believe he did too. Not one thing he said will ever fall to the ground. It will all be accomplished and fulfilled. And if he said the gates of hell won't prevail against you, that means that they're, that he already knows because he's already been there, which the scripture does say when he descended into the prison, into the into the deep, and, and preached to them while he was in the, in the grave, while he was in the tomb. Amen? How is it before he ascended, he first descended? into the depths of the earth and preached to those who were in prison. Where'd he go? He went right through the gates of hell. Anybody want to go? Come on. <laughs> Revealed in Daniel 2, God did set up his kingdom. Come on, baby, you're just too slow. i to put you on high speed. God did set up his kingdom. The saints possess it now. It will never be destroyed. It will not be left to others. It breaks and consumes all other kingdoms. It now stands forever. How many believe that's a little bit different picture than what they're trying to paint out there? And this isn't Bill's theory. This is what God says. This is we're taking this right out of the prophetic book itself that God had showed. And remember what I said: the revelation cannot disagree with this. However you want to look at the revelation, it can't disagree with what God reveals. Amen? It can't. It has to be in harmony. And actually, that little tidbit of information will allow you to possibly see the revelation for the first time the way it ought to be. You quit looking for an antichrist. You quit looking for a rapture. You quit looking for a seven-year tribulation. You, why? Because it's, there's, it's nowhere in Scripture. That's why. If they hadn't inserted that picture in the minds of mankind, it'd never be there. If they had not stole the 70th week of Daniel and put it out there at the end of the age and called that a seven-year tribulation and that it was uh, Antichrist, a man going to make a covenant with Israel for seven years and break it after three and a half years, nobody would have ever thought that because it's not in the Scripture anywhere. The, the devil had to make it up, but he knew he had to make it believable. And even those who teach it, you ask them, if you, ever, if you know him, they say, well, it's hard to teach. Sure it is. First thing, you've got to lie. The second thing is, you've got to take a little out of here, move it out of context, and then go get something over here and put it with it, and then next thing you know, you're done. You're trying to juggle all this stuff. You say, only God can figure it out. We're just going to hold on until Jesus gets here. Thank God he's going to rapture us out where all the hell breaks in. That's, that's what it all comes down to. And here's the thing. Why would God rapture out if you the one's got the kingdom? 
makes no sense because he said you are the fullness of him who will fill all things in all. That's why you've heard me be strong on that particular scripture because we're the fullness of him that's supposed to fulfill everything. Instead, we're running around trying to get bigger buildings with all this other stuff. We're trying to, oh, as soon as the gospel goes to all the earth, well, that happened to happen on the day of Pentecost. They said every nation under heaven was represented in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. And they all heard the gospel preached in their own language. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Most are looking to earthly things. Jesus told us something to remember. <coughs> John 18, 36. My kingdom is not of this world. Where are they looking to this world? To see what? His kingdom. They look at the world and they go, I don't see his kingdom. You're not supposed to. It's, it's not there. Yeah, it doesn't come with observation. The kingdom of God's inside of you. The revelation says he has made you to be a kingdom. And priests. Which means you are the go-between between between those out here and him. But you're not doing that on your own stead. You're doing it on behalf of Christ because he's the only one. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Can Christ be the high priest through you? You better believe it. Can Christ forgive sin through you? You better believe it. Can Christ heal the sick through you? You better believe it. Can Christ cast out devils? You better believe it. You You know why? Because the king of darkness had all that and Jesus took it all over. Doesn't belong to the enemy no more. Blinks to, belongs to us. What do you want to do with sickness and disease? You want to keep it alive or you want to just go ahead and knock it out, wipe it out? You want to forbid it in the kingdom? You want to forbid it into the realm of, of what God's given you? Then we need to start doing it. We need to start believing. I've got the power and the authority to do it. We have to believe it. Amen? doesn't mean the enemy's not going to resist. There's, there's still, the enemy has power. He just doesn't have any authority. He has dunamis. He don't have exousia. But you have exousia over all of his dunamis. You have authority over all his power. Jesus said, what, you got to wrestle with him first? He said, no, just resist him. Steadfast in the faith. You know what the faith is? Knowing what true. What did God say? You possess the kingdom, not the devil. And when you're an authority in the kingdom, all you have to do is bind it. It's the, it's the power behind you that will see that your word's carried out. You don't have to make it happen, but you do have to believe that what you said is going to come to pass. Amen? Hallelujah. You can't see what is truly happening in reference to the kingdom of God if you're looking in the natural. If my kingdom were this world, then my servants would fight. They were fighting. They just weren't fighting in this world because that's what not, not where the issue was. Sorry, God. This kingdom is not of this world. It's beyond it. And so are you. As I said earlier, you can't see what is truly happening in reference to the kingdom of God. As Jesus said, if my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. That I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence, not now. You know why? He was just setting it up. He was the king. And he remember what he said? Before he, he went, he said, Father, glorify me with the glory that I had with you before the world was. And then all of a sudden, we hear it in, in the book of Acts, it says, this same Jesus which you crucified, he's been made both Lord and Christ. And we see in Revelation 5, which agreed with Daniel chapter 7, he was carried to the Father. Maybe what he told them at the tomb, don't touch me, I've not yet ascended to the Father. What happened when he got to the Father? He got a kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Guess what? The kingdom that he had here works here. You know why? Because you're here. His kingdom's not of this world, but it sure is in this world. And the devil hates it. The kingdom of darkness can't stand it. You know why? Because you're light. And it's darkness. No. <laughs> Daniel 7, 19. Then I want to know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others. Exceeding dreadful. I mean, it's kind of like an actual, hey, what about that fourth thing? What, what's going on with that deal? I mean, once, once he heard that the saints of God were going to take the kingdom, possess it forever and ever, it's like, huh, I'm done. Woo-hoo. 
You think his cogitations was bothering him then? No, not then. So he's talking about the Roman kingdom with the little horn that plucked up three before it, whose teeth were of iron, his nails of brass, which devoured breaking pieces, stamped the residue with his feet. <coughs> These are some of the depictions of what was going on back in that time. If you've never studied it, do you know that they killed over a million Jews just in Jerusalem? Not counting what was going on over in Asia and what was going on in some of the surrounding areas. Just in Jerusalem alone, over a million Jews were killed. You know what? They run to the city. And Jesus said, don't go to the city. It, all the other times you went, don't go this time. When you see them there, you go up that way. You go run to the mountains. You run some other place. Don't even go back in and try to get a coat or anything. That's not a rapture, that's a run. They try to make that the rapture. There are going to be two in the field. One's going to take off and one ain't. It's okay. Let the one take off. You see what I'm saying? That's what he was talking about, protecting them, preserving them. Because the, the ones that were showing up were going to besiege the whole city, cut off food, cut off water, and cut off life. That's what they were there to do. And this is some of the depictions they had from back then. He devoured, break in pieces, stamped the residue with his feet, the Roman kingdom, the fourth legs and feet, Daniel chapter 2. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other, of the other which came up, and before whom three fell. Okay, we're talking about the fourth kingdom. We know it's the Roman kingdom. Even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. Yeah. I beheld of the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. The horn that spake was the eleventh of the kings of the Roman uh, kingdom. The horn needs to be identified. He's the eleventh of the kings of the Roman kingdom. Very simple and it's very confirmed just even by the scripture. Here's criteria for identifying that little horn. He rises out of the fourth beast, Rome. Rises among the horns after the three are plucked up. He's the eleventh established horn. He is different from the other ten. He is more stout than his fellows. Before him, three others were plucked up. I think I said that twice. It has eyes like a man and a mouth speaking against the Most High. He makes war against the saints. He wears out the saints. He thinks to change times and laws. He wars against the saints for three and a half years. He devours the whole earth. He reigns until the Ancient of Days comes. cha -ching. We have another time stamp. Until the Ancient of Days comes. Until he sits. Rome is the kingdom. So we're not looking for kingdoms, but kings or rulers. We already know what kingdom it is. We're looking for the horns of that kingdom. The beast was the kingdom. The horns are the ruling powers of that kingdom. The little horn ruled until the ancient of days sit. We know the rulers at that time. We have a list of rulers and emperors or Caesars of the Roman Empire. Here's the list of the first ten king rulers of the Roman beast of that time. Since 68 B.C. The ten rulers, Julius Caesar, was from 68 to 44 B.C. He was the pot of Maximus. He brutally was stabbed to death by the Republican Senate. Believe that. He must have been Democrat. So there was a triumvirate. Three co-leaders. All were functioning at the same time. Mark Antony, Octavian Augustus Caesar, Marcus Aemilius Lepidus. But only one of them was confirmed before the Senate. And that was Marcus Aemilius Lepidus. He was confirmed to be Pontiff Maximus. There he is. And he ruled from 44 to 13 B.C. So we have the first two, which is important, because Jesus is born now. Or he was, he's getting ready to be born. Our first two, Julius Caesar, Marcus Lepidus. Now the next five. We have Augustus from 27 B.C. to 14 A.D., where Jesus was born during that time. Tiberius, 14 to 37. Caligula, 37 to 41. Claudius, from 41 to 54. Nero, from 54 to 68. So that's seven of them. And now the next three. Remember, how many horns were there? Ten. And then three got subdued, and one come up after them, right? All right. We're going to see that. The 
And then the next three, after Nero killed himself, you had Galba, Otho, and Vitellius. They call it the year of the four kings, or the year of the four emperors. In one year, they went through. When Nero got killed, or killed himself, all of the ones who were close were fighting to take the power. There was a civil war inside Rome. Galba took over. He ruled for just a few months. And then Otho, and then Galba got killed. Otho takes over, and he rules. Galba took over when Nero died in 68, and he ruled from 68 to 69. I think it, maybe it, it might have been about seven to eight months. And then Otho took over, and he lasted about two months. Vitellius took over, and he got killed within a couple of months. And so you have eight, nine, and ten, and the three being plucked up. And guess who came in his place in the same year? You had Julius Caesar. Well, I don't know why I'm going back over all this. You had Julius, Lepidus, Octavian, Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius, Nero, Galba, Otho, Vitellius. That's the ten. But these three were plucked up trying to replace Nero. And the one that came who was the left, the eleventh, who was the little horn who reigned uh, all the way through the whole destruction of Jerusalem was... Vespasian. Flavius Vespasian. 69 to 79 AD. He was the little one. Now, I put some criteria up there. We know he ruled because he ruled till the ancient of days sit. Are you with me? Judgment was poured out. Plucked up. Galba, Otho, and Vitellius. There's no doubt that the little horn is Flavius Vespasian. He's not the Antichrist, but he was an Antichrist. Antichrist. You with me? When Flavius, Flavius was sent by Nero. I don't know if I have it up here. Oh, okay, let's see. Criteria for identifying the little horn. Rises out of the fourth beast. Rome. Yes, he did. Rises among the horns and then three are plucked up. Yes. He's the eleventh established horn. Yes. It was different from the other ten. Yes, he was poor and a new bloodline. Had never had anybody rule in that. He is more stout than his fellow. Yeah, he conquered the rest of them. Before him, three others were plucked up. Yes, Gabba, Otho, and Vitelli. Has eyes like a man and the mouth speaking against the Most High? Yes, he mocked God. He makes war against his saints. Yes, he did for years. Nero sent him in 66 AD to besiege Jerusalem and wipe out the whole city. In 66, Nero sent him. Nero died in 68, and that's when Galba and Otho and Vitellius tried to take over. And then Vespasian, when those got conquered, Vespasian left Jerusalem and went back to Rome and took over. And he left his son, Titus Vespasian, to be the one to actually carry out the full destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. God saw that. Almost 500 years before it happened. And he told him. He wears out the saints? Yeah, you better believe he did. He destroyed the city and the people? Yes. He thinks to change times and laws? Yes, he did. Wars against the saints for three and a half years? Yep, 67 to 71 AD. He devours the whole earth? Yeah, the whole known region at that time. He reigns until the ancient days comes? Yes, he said. And he did until 79 AD throughout the end of that generation. Remember, Jesus said this generation will not pass until all be fulfilled. Amen? Go back to the scripture. A little bit more disclosure. Daniel 7, 22, until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to who? The saints of the Most High. That judgment was given over to them and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Hallelujah. That, that confirms what was said earlier in Daniel chapter 7. That's why I said Daniel 2 is important, but Daniel 7 shows more from the spiritual side because it's the prophet of God seeing it, and that's what God wanted to reveal to the spiritual mind. He said, look, all hell's going to break loose, but it's okay because I'm giving the kingdom to you. So in Daniel 7, 23, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. Back to I don't know what that's going to all about. 
was given. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Those are vital times. that's showing up. Hold on. Well, you remember what I said earlier that once the saints possess the kingdom, you've got to remember what Daniel 2 said. Dan Daniel 2 and Daniel 7. Remember the God of heaven sent the stone and it was God setting up his kingdom and it was a kingdom that would stand for ever. Would not be left to another people. Would never be destroyed. Would never be crushed. All these things. Well, guess who got the kingdom? We did. And it's confirmed because exactly what he said, once we do, it will not be left to others. It will never be destroyed. It will crush all the other kingdoms. It will grow and fill the earth. The saints will take possession of the kingdom. The saints will possess the kingdom forever and ever. Now that's where we are right now. The mountain is supposed to be growing to fill all the earth. That was the stone. The stone kingdom. So we're contending with Whatever you want to call that system out there. The system, to me, is of the devil. Right. It is. And it's teaching demonic doctrine. And it's denying what Christ did in the flesh. Absolutely. Because they're saying, oh, he did it, but it won't amount to anything until way out here. There's a lot of them even teach that when you die, you just go lay in the ground until Jesus shows up. They call it soul sleep. That Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Is, is the Lord in soul sleep too? No. It's ridiculous. We, 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 we are responsible for what we believe. I can't blame nobody else for that because the Holy Ghost is the one that teaches me and believe me and God being all true. If we sit in deception, it's of our own choice. So at some point, we've got to repent. We gotta change our mind. We have to start saying, you know what, Father, forgive me, I believe the lie thing. I believe the lie about the dinosaurs for a period of time. I know there were dinosaurs, but you know what? They didn't roam the earth billions of years ago. They roamed the earth within six thousand years ago or seven thousand years ago. They had to. Had to. Even even the scriptures show that giants were in the land of those times. Would it take six men to carry one cluster of grapes? That's pretty big. Amen. But in any case, I'm just simply saying that we need to repent and believe that when Jesus said all authority is given to him in heaven and earth, go you therefore. He said, be of good cheer, overcome the world. Amen. No weapon forced against you can prosper. Well, why is that? Well, because you've got authority over all those weapons. They can't destroy you. Why? Because you are in possession of a kingdom that can never be destroyed. Amen. Jesus said, he who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He who believes in me and lives shall never die. you believe that? Yeah, Martha went and got Mary on that one. Uh, I'll be right back. And she, Mary, uh, the Lord wants to talk to you. Got a little tough for Martha. She couldn't quite handle her Mary. So in any case, to make a long story short, you live forever right now. We have a period of time in this earth not to do what we want, not to run after all of our little goals and desires. We need to be defeating the kingdom of darkness. If you want this stupid stuff to end, we've got to be about the Father's business. It's time that we take possession of the kingdom. First thing, we've got to believe it's here. The second thing is, we have to take it. The third thing, we have to possess it. Then, we have to function it. We have to begin to function it. It can't be, you can't function in something not of this realm unless you consider yourself not of this realm. Amen. We are in this realm, but we're not of this realm. You see, our lives have been consumed. Even everything we've learned and been taught as we grow up is do the best you can, get the best you can, get the best job, get the best education, all these other things. And all that stuff was running us down the wrong path. We need the best education we can get, and that's from the Holy Ghost. And the best job you can take is the one God's given you. Mm -hmm. And if the church would have been about that, this would all have been over a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But you know what? John was concerned about the spirit of Antichrist. And he sure was smart to be so concerned. Because we're here 2,000 years almost down the road. And they're still, they still can't figure out 
what God said 2,500 years ago. So, by the grace of God, we're getting there. Jesus said all authority. Daniel 7, 23, I, I can't believe I'm still talking about that fourth beast in the fourth kingdom. <coughs> Let me get through some of these things. These are things you already know. The fourth kingdom was the kingdom of Rome. Come on, that's Back to the scripture. Let's see what we end up here. Oh, it's a verse from all the while. Great. We went all the way back about nine verses. We don't need the maps of the kingdoms. You will see Babylon. That was Babylon's kingdom. You see Israel, Jordan, Syria, Iraq, into Iran, Turkey, and Egypt. And then when you look at the uh, Medo-Persian kingdom, It was about the same size. Had a little bit less of Babylon. Wasn't quite near as big as uh, what was going on uh, under Nebuchadnezzar. We have the next kingdom, which would have been Greece, which we already looked at that once before. Greece had all of Egypt, went all the way over into Persia and Asia back that way, and even reached up into Europe, but not quite to Italy or any that was up that way. And that was the generals. That was their, end, their kingdom. But Rome, when you look at Rome, Rome took all of Egypt, Cyrenia, Africa, near to all the way, in, uh, all the way over into Hispanic, Gallia, all the way up into all, and Hibernia, uh, Hibernia uh, Calarinia, Britannia. He took all of Europe. See, down here is Italy. Nobody had even got to Italy. The first that they got was up to Illyricum, which is just right uh, of Italy there. But Rome took it all. They come all the way down here. So Rome pretty much ruled over the known earth at that particular time. And I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be showing that when we already know that during that Roman kingdom, God said it was kingdom. We already looked at the horns. I think I, I messed up my slides, probably. We know the ten rulers. We've already been through that. We've been through the eleventh already. There they are again, in case you forgot. <laughs> yep, remember those three? Plucked up, there he is. Now the ten horns out of the kingdom are ten kings that would arise and we looked at them. And he would be diverse. He'd subdue three before him. We did that. Wow. He did make war against the saints. We looked at all that. We had our criteria already. Evidently, I want some more detail on that. But the judgment itself shall sit. That's different. Daniel 7, 26. The judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion. Who do you think sitting in judgment? The saints of God. The judgment shall sit, and who? They. Who was judgment given to? We saw that already. To the saints. It's, it's the saints that was taking away his dominion to consume and to destroy it, even unto the end. I'm not... Reviewing the little horn again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Daniel 9, 27. The kingdom and dominion, the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. Amen. Daniel 7, 27. The kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven <coughs> shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. I love that. He's confirming it. Given to the saints. What? The kingdom, the dominion, the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. Given to the saints. Now, when did that happen? Back when Jesus took it. You know how I know Jesus had to give it to us then? And how we have to be one with him? Because it wasn't going to be left to anybody else. If the kingdom can't be left to any other, then you can't have it and give it to somebody else. We all have to be one. Amen? In him. And we're all serving in the same dominion, the same kingdom, the same authority, the same power, the same greatness of that kingdom and everything else. That's why Jesus said, hey, the things I do, you can do also. 
and you can do greater things, so I'm going to go up there and take care of that old dark, that, uh, that old mean devil out there that's got the kingdom of darkness that's been out there doing it. I'm going to bind the king. you got to go kick the rest of their butts. Okay, Jesus, we got that. 2,000 years later, we still ain't got that. We got to get that. We're, we're still trying to just get the kingdom back. I, I can't tell you the persecution I've had over just talking about the kingdom being here. But I'm not just pulling it out of a rabbit's hat. I'm showing you what God said and what He prophesied and what He said. But they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. It's not like we've never heard it. They don't want to hear it. They won't listen to it. They already know what they believe and they don't want to ruffle the feathers. If, if these denominational ministers started believing the truth, they'd get kicked out of the association. they get kicked out of the association, they lose their retirement. So they, they can't do this. Bobby, can they do this? Not in their current state, right? They can do it, but they're going to have to lay down all of the other stuff that they got because the denominations would begin to just devour them if they start teaching the truth. But the saints already have the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom and the whole heaven. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him through them. Amen. It's a beautiful picture. And, and you know what? When you sit down and think it out, there ain't nobody could have come up with that but God. There ain't nobody could have done it but him. Because when you look at the beginning, it's kind of like Jesus being born in the manger. When you see the 12 disciples born in hell, basically, going through it, getting destroyed, getting murdered, every single one of them. And, and the enemy having his heyday, and then finally the son says, I've had enough. This generation's about over. I told him I'd show up. Here I come. And he did come. He came in with the Roman armies, and he wiped out. He avenged the blood of the righteous. All of the righteous from Abel all the way through. And, and they were excited about coming, but the enemy didn't like it, but there was nothing he could do about it. The kingdom has come. His will is being done. In heaven, but it needs to be done in earth as it is in heaven. And there's nobody else on earth can do that but his. And if you're his, we need to get about it. Instead of praying, Jesus, do something. He's saying, I've already sent you. You're there. What are you talking to me about? Amen. We're asking him to do stuff. He's already given us authority and power to do. We can defeat the enemy. We can tear down the unrighteousness and the injustice in this nation. And we can spread like a wildfire across the planet Earth. The kingdom of God's capable of doing that. Remember the 12 when they talked about the 12? Those who turned the world upside down has come here too. I'm going to tell you. That when the saints start walking in the authority and the power, when the sons of God begin to manifest, the children of God begin to manifest, the whole creation has grown, grown and travailed, waiting for that manifestation, they're, it's going to be released into the glory of the sons of God. Don't think that the sun can't help you. Don't think that the waves of the ocean can't help you. Don't think that the storms across the land can't help you. You understand what I'm saying? We have a creation... And, 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 and I want to take you back briefly to creation that he has created all things visible and invisible. The invisible can come and help you. Don't wait till you see it to ask for it. Know that it's there because he created it. And if the whole creation, including the invisible, is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, the angels of God watch over the word of God which has given you birth to perform his word. God's able to work through you through the Holy Ghost to cause those things that are invisible to become visible. When we start tapping into what we have in Christ, it's going to scare the hell out of the kingdom of God. Amen. All right, we're there. Father, I bless you. I thank you, Lord. Does anybody have anything to say before we close this session? Any questions? Amen. Father, we love you. We bless you. Thank you, Father. Forgive us, Father, for forgive me, Lord, from, from having my fun in the flesh. And, and Lord, I just exalt you and magnify you. You are such an incredible God. You are definitely God of anything that would ever consider itself God. You're King of kings. You're mighty God. And Father, we thank you that you hid these things from the, those who think they're smart. The wise and the prudent, they don't know anything, Father God. Unless they learn it from you, they don't know anything. And Father God, the only way we would ever know it is that you've revealed it. And we, Father, want to be faithful. 
with that that you've given and entrusted into us. And Father, I pray that what you communicate, what you reveal, will sink down into our hearing. And that we would be established and rooted and grounded in the truth that is with us right now. And Lord, that we will begin to not only wake up, but that we will begin to shout on the mountaintops. Father, we all need to be established in the truth that is revealed. That we don't go out with just knowledge. We go out with revelation. That we don't go out just speaking things, Father, to stir things up. That we go out with the ministry of reconciliation. To try to bring them out of darkness into the light. To try to bring them out of error. Considering our own selves, Father, that we can bring them back and reconcile them back to the truth, Father. And that there can be incredible rejoicing in heaven and in earth, Father. We exalt you. We bless you. We thank you, Father. Prepare our hearts and our minds as we come together tomorrow. And we look, Father, at, Revel at Daniel chapter 9 and we confirm it all the way through the gospel. And we thank you for it, Father. We bless you and be with us when we come back early next week. And we're going to tackle the whole book of Revelation. And Father, we just exalt you and give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.